Welcome back! For many of the classic gaming consoles, it's very nice to have a CRT, but in reality they are large, need maintenance, and a huge fire hazard. With the switch over to TFTs, we did have the RCA inputs, but newer TVs have started to no longer include these legacy ports. In today's video, we have a cheap solution for many Nintendo consoles. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribe. So we were contacted by Mayflash, and they asked us if we wanted to check out one of their new products for a video review. Seriously, do they even check your video? I honestly don't know, but this is what we got. The Magic S Pro 2 and the HDTV 1080p converter. And seriously, this is tiny. It looks like you'd put an eraser in here or something. It's really small. So in this box we have the adapter and the instruction manual, which is bare bones at best. And it's only in English. It claims the adapter supports the Super Famicom, Super Nintendo, N64 and GameCube. And here it is, the main attraction. We're glad to report that this stick is not too long, so it won't be getting in the way of other things. I use that excuse all the time. It converts the video signal into HDMI 1080p, and we're given a 3.5mm stereo audio jack in case we need to use headphones or stereo speakers. The plug itself is for analog AV out, which can connect to a variety of Nintendo consoles. In this video review, we'll test it in comparison to the native RCA inputs of my 2009 Sony Bravia. So this is a Japanese Super Nintendo hooked up directly to RCA, and you can see that it stretches out the image to fill the TV. Using the real control, we can squish it down to play the game in the correct aspect ratio. Now let's try the Mayflash adapter. We'll plug this in directly and use a HDMI cable. We can see again that the display has been stretched to fill the screen, but this time we can't squish it down by using the remote. As most TV sets are widescreen now, an aspect ratio switch is a must for HDMI adapters for classic consoles. Considering that the video signal is being converted from analog to digital, latency is quite minimal. Here's some footage from my video capture card. But as it stretches the image out, all distortions are amplified. But if we use OBS, we can shrink the horizontal size to 1440 to get a nice 4-3 aspect ratio. Before we move on to the next system, let's test out a few more games. This one's Puzzle Bubble, also known as Buster Move, a nice little port of the arcade game. Rockman X, an excellent platformer title for the Super Nintendo. I am rock hard right now, check my pegs. Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, frowned upon by many, but we think it's a nice starting game for turn-based RPGs. Time for the N64. Same story as the Super Famicom. We hooked it up to the TV via RCA cable. We can switch aspect ratios using the remote control. When using the Mayflash adapter, we can't change the aspect ratio, but it is working fine through HDMI. Footage from the video capture card. Bit of Smash Brothers. Zelda Ocarina of Time. Have you ever played an Ocarina? I want to play a rendition of Dual Hast on it. Dual Dual Hast, Dual Hast Mitch. F-Zero X Don't 
007, Goldeneye. One good thing about this is we can change the video aspect ratio in game. So we can fill out the monitor and it'll look fine. It looks terrible. The Nintendo 64 was a blurry mess back then, and sadly nothing has changed. Next console, Nintendo GameCube. And similar to GoldenEye, we can actually change the aspect ratio in-game for F-Zero GX. So we can have 4-3, and if you want, we can shift it up to 16-9 in the main menu. So now we can compare apples to apples. Here are the RCA ports and the TV. And the Mayflash adapter. It does shrink the display a little, but this can be compensated with the TV overscan settings. Honestly, there's not much difference in quality between these two. Here's some footage from the capture card in 4.3. And now it's 16.9 with the aspect corrected in game. Here's Mario Kart Double Dash, and there is no aspect ratio option in this game. So we change this and the rest of the GameCube games to 4.3 in OBS. Last up is Super Mario Sunshine, and it seems that the bright palette of this game doesn't work too well with the analog video output. It's time for the pros and the cons. This adapter is a cheap, non-fav solution to get SNES, N64 and GameCube working on a monitor or TV with HDMI input. It's a shame this does not have an aspect ratio switch, and for those that want quality, hardware modding or using a digital video output on the GameCube is still the better option to have. So, do you think we should try our best to keep these working on current displays? Or should we just give in and let the official mini consoles take over? Anyway, this has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! I am John Luke. Give me your lunch money for a back rub.